Hello, Wong. First and foremost, giving all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Machakodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Greetings and salutations to Akim. Upon the testimony of Yahweh Shai in truth and sincerity. This is the book of St. Matthew's, the 15th chapter, in the 16th verse. And Yahweh Shai said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly, and is cast out into the drought. But those things which proceed out of the mouth cometh forth from the heart, and they defile the man. And the understanding behind it is that, you know, the scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Why is that? Because that's, the scripture also says, guard your hearts and your mind. Because what is in your mind? What? It's a quote from um, Marcus Aurelius, a, a stoic philosopher. He said, it says, the impediment to action is action. I believe I briefly paraphrased. I believe I'm saying it correctly. It says the impediment to action is action. What stands in the way becomes the way. So what's in your mind? What's what is standing in the way? What's in your thought process? Ultimately, it will be enacted in your life. If you have hate for your brother in your heart. It will be revealed. It will show itself. You know, these guys, these other camps, they can say that they don't hate us all they want, but they slander us. And they came from what? Their heart. What do they say? They say it out of their mouth, but it, the hate came from their heart. The hate comes from their heart. Adultery. Before the man had sex with another man's property or woman, it was in his mind to do it. And what stood in the way became the way. Order. Harmonious arrangement, if I may. What stands in the way becomes the way. If, if the elder is in the way for you, if the doctrine is in the way for you, that that becomes the way. If envy, content, pride. Of course, we all have these thoughts that flicker through our head, but it can't you you can't allow that to define you. As the scripture speaks speaks about rebuking Satan. Don't allow him to have a um you know a house party in your domicile. You know, is jab and move. I know that I know Jacob wrestled that he grappled with the angel, but with this thing of ours with Satan, you got to jab and move. Steep and move. Knee and move. Combo and move. Because what stands in the way becomes the way. Verse 19. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness. And I mentioned that earlier. These guys, they say 
great millstone or rapists. We deal with underage women. That's called being a false witness. That's 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 been that's that's breaking the Big Ten. But you you claim to keep the laws, but you're clearly breaking the laws, blatantly. And one of the, and you're breaking one of the more important laws, which is to love your your neighbor as you love yourself. Being a false witness against your neighbor is not loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Saying we don't have to call on the name of the Heavenly Father is not loving the Most High with all your heart. The scripture speaks about, and they that love thy... Let me get that scripture. Let me get it. Because you want, you guys don't want to use the proper name of the Heavenly Father. You're ashamed to use the name of the Heavenly Father. Because you don't love him. This is the book of Psalms. Which one do I want to get? Let's get, um, matter of fact, let's just read them both from here. This is Psalms 5 and 11. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Who does he defend? Well, he defends those who run to that strong tower. Well, what's the strong tower? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. That's the book. That's chapter 18. That's, that's literally the 18th chapter. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. So if you're calling on Jesus Christ, if you get mad at us when we when we call, when we call set the standard of calling on the proper name of the Heavenly Father and only begotten Son, well, you, you're, not, that's, you're not adding up to be those guys who are in that strong tower. You're languishing from the gates. It says, let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. And saying every time you hear the hear your how about you, you want to scoff. Yes, Bishop Nathan, you said that. We're not bearing false witness. He did say that. We heard him. Everybody heard him. That's not loving, that's not having love for the name of the Heavenly Father. That's hate. Calling on Christ when you know the the, the proper name. And Christ, even the Christ, that's not his name. Mashiach, the Messiah, Christ is a title, but the proper he, Hebraic um, pronunciation of how you say um, the anointed is Mashiach. So, I mean, why would you want to separate yourself from your culture and your identity so much? It's like, it seems as if somebody's compromised. Like, why do you have a problem with the problem? Why do you have the Why do you have a problem with with the language of our forefathers? Why do you have a problem with the language that the heavenly Father gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Why? Why is there such a problem with it for you? That's hate. That's hate. Yeah, I was trying to spoke of you knowing the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you you saying some people call them this name, some people call them that name, but you're still in bondage to the name that was given and forced upon you by your slave master. So you're not free. And yet, how wish I didn't die for this garbage you niggas are enacting. That wasn't in the clause and that was not in the contract of the sacrifice. This is Psalms chapter 119, verse 132. It says, look upon, look upon me. Pardon me. Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. So the mercy is going to come to those who love his name. 
If you're saying that the Heavenly Father's name doesn't matter, that's not love. That is not love. That isn't love. And where there's no love, there's no mercy. So keep that in mind. So we have to take heed and, and be considerate of what we allow to come out of our mouth. When a brother corrects you, how do you respond? That's, well, no, that's going to show your heart, though. When you're admonished through the Spirit. How, your response, oh, yeah, it's going to, sh it's, you're going to be shown. Are we your judge? No, absolutely not. Is Yahweh the judge? Yes. And you should just fear him. It says false, going back to verse 19, so it says, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. And all this comes from evil thoughts. Verse 20 says, These are the things that defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defile not a man. All right. Now, now, is it good to wash your hands before you eat? Yes. But it's not a priority when you're committing adultery. Don't try to compare eating with unwashed hands when you're fornicating, when you're being a murderer, when you're bearing false witness and you're lying on your brothers and saying this and that. And you're saying the Heavenly Father's name doesn't matter. That's no, that's that defiles a man. Not you, not 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 eating without washing your hands. Don't And the scripture says, take heed to thyself. It's not about, we're not here to, you know, we self-reflect on ourselves. Scripture speaks about self-examination. It says, <sighs> scripture says, examine yourself on whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. Okay, give me one second. Get this scripture real quick. I believe, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, you know how much I said it? Let's see here. Yeah, this is um, yeah, Matthew, the 12th chapter. We already do, we already there. Let me see. Matthew 12. We'll start at verse 36. Matter of fact, we'll start at verse 35. It says, A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth the good things, and the evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. So how you speak to your brother, how you respond, you know, just speaking loftily and unadvisedly. You know, vainly, proudly. These words are going to be held in account on the Day of Judgment.
Verse 37, for by thy words, thou shalt be justified, and by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. That I'm gonna give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, by Shem Al Shai, by Hashem Makakwadash, Devil Honor City Elders and the Apostles of Great Millstone. And salutations to you, Akim Shalom, and keep the faith.